So it is that time of year again. iOS 17 is almost here, bringing a load of new features, both big and small, to the iPhone. I've been using beta to try these out, things like personalizing what your friends see when you call them, new ways to interact with widgets, custom stickers you can spam your friends with, and much more. My name is Jack, and these are my top five iOS 17 features. I'm also getting kind of close to 15K subscribers, so if you do end up enjoying the video, remember to hit like and subscribe. First up, let's start with contact posters. A fun way to customize how your caller ID looks when calling a friend with another iPhone. You can actually have a few of these in a load of different styles and swap between them. When you create one, you can use your Memoji, choose a pose or have fun making one with the True Depth camera, or just choose a photo from the photo library. You can choose a font, change the thickness, the color. It's a very similar process to the lock screen customization added last year. You can swipe through some different photo styles and filters that remove the background, customize the colors, go for something bold or more subtle. You can really make some standout designs that fit your style and it's a fun way to sort of stand out on the lock screen when you phone a friend. Plus these can work with third party VoIP apps if developers choose to support it. Next up is stickers. Last year, Apple added a really cool feature where you could hold down on the subject of a photo, like a person or a pet, to select them and then auto cut them out, and then drag or paste them in another app with the background removed, saving you all that time from cutting it out yourself. It does a pretty good job and it only takes a second. It was kind of weird in messages though, as you'd have to send the full blown image in the chat, but now you can turn them into your own custom stickers and then peel and stick them onto the chat bubbles. They also have some cool effects that you can add to them. Before we were limited to the ones made by developers from the App Store, here's a few that I've made and you can even use live photos to make them animated, which is pretty sweet. You can use them to make your own reaction stickers and then you know spam your friends with them. There's a couple of ways you can make them. The easiest is just to open the Photos app, hold down on the subject and then tap the Add Sticker button and then it adds it to your sticker library. Or open up Messages, you'll notice there's a new cleaner looking chat interface now. The strip of iMessage apps has been moved under this new plus button. And here you'll also find the sticker section with all of the old stickers you already have, plus a section for your own. To add one, tap the big plus to bring up the image browser, choose something you like, and then it will automatically do the cutout for you. You can add an effect like a thick outline. There's a comic style filter. Puffy adds a kind of 3D depth and shine that changes as you tilt the phone using the accelerometer. And Shiny, which kind of reminds me of the stickers I used to collect as a kid. I don't know if kids still do that anymore. Maybe I'm just old. But yeah, I hope that they add some more filters down the line and maybe a way to organize these as I can see this drawer filling up pretty quickly and getting a bit chaotic. And one more thing, you can also now use any emoji as a sticker too. They have their own tab where you can choose any emoji you want and then peel and stick it to a chat bubble. And you can pinch to resize and rotate them. Next up is something that I've waited for and wanted for so long now, and I'm sure that some of you have too, and that's interactive widgets. Apple first added widgets back in iOS 14 as a way of showing glanceable information from apps on the home screen. But beyond that, you couldn't really do much with them, which always felt a bit like a missed opportunity. There was no way to interact with a list or podcast. Tapping them acted more like a shortcut that opened the app and then took you to that content. But now you can do some quick interactions, things like checking off some reminders, start playing some music from the charts, turn on your lights or other smart home accessories, all with a tap without leaving the home screen. This is coming to iPadOS as well, but because this is a beta, I can only show you some of Apple's own widgets, but third-party developers can add the same interactivity to theirs too which will start to roll out once iOS 17 officially releases in a couple of weeks. There are some boundaries limited to the interactivity. It is just limited to buttons and toggles. As far as I'm aware, you can't have like scrolling content or anything too crazy to save the battery life. But nonetheless, a great update to widgets to make them even more useful considering how much space they take up on the home screen. Building on from that is something completely new. Now when you dock your iPhone in a charging stand like this horizontally, it switches into standby mode. This kind of turns the iPhone into a little home hub for your desk or in the kitchen. The first page uses blown up versions of the small size widgets from the home screen to show you some glanceable info. You have two stacks that you can swipe through and customize. It supports Smart Rotate to show you things it thinks that are relevant in the moment, like an upcoming calendar appointment or reminder. Again, third party apps will work here on release. Plus the screen will stay on if you have an iPhone 14 Pro or later with the always on display. 
You can swipe to get to the second page, which shows the time along with photos from the photo library or specific albums, and swipe again to get to the full screen clock view. And I really love these. These are kind of like massive Apple Watch faces. There's a few different styles like float and solar, which changes throughout the day. You can customize the colors how you like. And in low light, the iPhone automatically switches everything to red to help you sleep if you want to use this on a bedside table. And it just looks so beautiful on the OLED display. But what's pretty clever is if you use this with certified MagSafe chargers, it will remember the screen setup for each different charger. So you can have one screen for the bedroom, another for the living room, and then one more for the kitchen. It also works with Siri if you need to ask something and it will show live activities if you're waiting for a takeaway or ride pickup. At my desk, I've been using it with my Lab22 2-in-1 wireless charger and this Belkin MagSafe charger on my bedside table, which has a built-in kickstand. And it will auto switch to standby even with chargers that lean back a little bit like this. It doesn't have to be completely vertical. I'll link to these plus some others that you might wanna get hold of if you wanna try these out and be ready on release. I've been using it every night and it's pretty cool to have your day and your calendar ready to go when you wake up and use it to control your smart lights. Definitely a top feature to check out when iOS 17 drops. Another thing I've really been liking in the beta is improvements to predictive text and autocorrect. I don't know about you, but I feel like it's kind of been a bit off in recent years. I'll be typing something that I type all the time and then it just changes it to something completely not what I wanted. But Apple says the keyboard now uses a transformer language model, which should make autocorrect and word prediction much more accurate than before. It can make much better corrections to things like sentence grammar now, and even predict the ending of a whole sentence with some pretty good accuracy, and you can accept it by hitting the spacebar. It also has an updated UI. It now underlines a corrected word, which you can tap to quickly change back to whatever it was you originally typed. And they say it should be much better at learning what you type and suggesting the sort of things that you would type. So no more duck-related mistakes. This all still happens on the device, so it's secure, with Apple leveraging the power of machine learning on their own silicon chips. This is kind of one of those background features compared to the others that I showed you, but it's one of the ones that you'll be using across the system all the time. And in my experience, it's been a really positive improvement so far. There's also, of course, a bunch of little things coming to iOS 17 to look forward to. We've got a fancy new wallpaper that comes in light and dark modes. Apple Maps finally supports offline maps, so you can select and save an area to use offline if you're roaming abroad or you just wanna save data. Siri now works when you just say Siri, they've dropped the hay. And you can also do back-to-back -back requests without having to reactivate it. Visual Lookup can find you recipes for similar dishes just from a photo or video, which is pretty cool. Audio messages in iMessage now show a transcription, so you don't have to sit and listen to the whole thing or forget and have to go back and see what someone said. And you can quickly share your contact info with another iPhone user by bringing them together. Kind of reminds me of the Bump app from the early App Store. And do the same gesture if you want to airdrop some photos or files. And the file transfer will even continue over the internet if you both leave the airdrop range. Those are my top five iOS 17 features. Let me know what you're most excited about in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to see more tech content. You can get these features now by downloading the beta under software updates. It is fairly stable at the moment. I've not had any major crashes, but it is pre-release software. So do make sure that you have a backup to a Mac or PC first, just in case anything does go wrong. You don't want to lose your data. iOS 17 is compatible with all of these devices. There's no official release date yet, but we can expect it to drop around mid-September when the next iPhone launches, which I will be covering on the channel, so definitely get subscribed to see that. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.